Geno Smith was the 39th pick in the 2013 draft, and in his first two years, he combined for 25 touchdowns and 34 interceptions. So it makes sense that the Jets moved off of him when they did, but it doesn't make sense that he didn't get another opportunity to start until 2022, seven years later. Since joining Seattle, he's thrown for 16 touchdowns and only four interceptions, and he's been a top five quarterback through the first seven weeks. Defenses this year are selling out to stop the pass, and the result has been a lot of ugly quarterback play, a lot of checkdowns, and a lot of running the ball. But Geno Smith recognized that this was probably his last opportunity to be a starter, so he's been playing really aggressively. Geno Smith leads the NFL in PFF grade on passes 20 yards plus down the field, and his 5.5% big time throw rate ranks second in the NFL. A lot of his biggest plays have come against man coverage. I've been really impressed with his accuracy and ball placement down the field, but I also like how Geno Smith and Pete Carroll recognize that throwing a jump ball to DK Metcalf is still an efficient play, even if he's technically covered. And so it's funny when you think about how Pete Carroll Carroll was viewed as a coach before the season as having more of a conservative run the ball type of philosophy, but this year the Seahawks have been aggressive pushing the ball downfield, letting their receivers make plays, and so the narrative surrounding the Seahawks offense has changed for good reason. Back with Russell Wilson, there was the whole let Russ cook thing, and it just seemed like Pete Carroll was holding back what could have been a potentially really explosive offense. But when you look at how Russ has played in Denver and how well Geno Smith is playing, it seems like Pete Carroll was actually mad asking a lot of Russell Wilson's deficiencies. I've been really impressed with Geno Smith's ability to throw with anticipation. Right here, he's got a deep out on third and long. You can see that he gets rid of the ball before the receiver breaks on his route. And then he isn't Lamar Jackson athletically, but he has the ability to evade pressure in the pocket. You see him right here, sidestep the pressure up the middle and then finds Will Disley open along the sideline for a touchdown. So if the defense is playing man coverage and the corners have their backs turned to the quarterback, Geno's perfectly capable of taking advantage of that and turning it into a 20 yard gain. Geno Smith's performance against New Orleans is one of the best quarterback performances that I've watched this year. This touchdown in particular to Tyler Lockett, it's just amazing how the ball never dies in the air with Geno Smith. Every time I watch this play, I expect the ball to just drop into one of the defender's hands, but it keeps going and hits Tyler Lockett in stride. That's one of the things that I've noticed with Geno Smith. When he's throwing the ball 20 yards down the field, his receivers don't have to stop and adjust to the ball. They just keep running at full speed and Geno drops it in there perfectly. When you compare where the Seahawks stand right now with their outlook just a few months ago, it really shows how just one good offseason can completely turn around the outlook for a franchise. Geno's gonna be the quarterback for the foreseeable future. They hit on a left tackle and a right tackle in the same class with Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas. Tariq Woolen looks like an absolute steal in the fifth round, and Kobe Bryant has been playing really well for them. And then Kenneth Walker looks like a hit also. So the 2022 draft, the offseason where you recoup a bunch of draft capital by trading away Russ, the Seahawks front office has been lights out over the past year, and they're setting the franchise up for a ton of success over the next five years. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any players or teams that you like me to cover.